So someone asked me this week, Pastor, if you don't have to wear a mask up front, why do we have to wear a mask? And that's a good question. So we're going to talk about that at the council meeting in the coming month, and we're going to try to uh, make some uh, decisions. We are always uh, going day to day, week to week from the health guidelines, but I understand the uh, difficulties of trying to sing through a face covering. So uh, pray for the church council, pray for the church, not only here but in every place as we navigate through uh, this difficult time. We have a meal with the poor coming up in a few weeks in the middle of November. Uh, the committee needs a couple more people to help share that uh, meal. It's a Thanksgiving dinner on, I believe, Sunday, November the 14th is when we go down to serve our dinner on the north side. So a couple people are needed to help make that uh, meal possible. And you can, uh, if you're interested, share that with me as you leave today. Finally, I want to thank Melody Frankovich, Cindy Zook, and everyone on Christian Education, or perhaps the Library Committee, for placing out in the foyer, in the Education Wing, a nice presentation of Martin Luther and the Reformation books that we have in our church library. As you leave today, you may want to go down the hallway and take a peek at what has been set up as we celebrate uh, this Reformation Sunday. Also, I want to thank uh, uh, the Trivellinos for placing on the very door of our church Martin Luther's 95 Theses. They're not only on the front door of the church, they're also on the door as you enter the sanctuary. You may want to take a glimpse at those 95 Theses as you leave today. They were very important 500 years ago, and they remain very important for our life of faith today this wonderful message of the Reformation, that God loves us freely, that we are justified by God's grace through our faith. God bless us as we gather in worship today, and thanks to everyone who is joining us by our live streaming.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Please kneel or be seated. Let us pray. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of God's glory. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts in Jesus' name the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I had made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. 
though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their inequity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reciting Psalm 46 responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with, with its tumult. <laughs> God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the day, break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, regard the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. A reading from John. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the faith, law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The Son has a place there forever. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The nursing home name in the Happy Gilmore movie is Silver Acres. Nursing home names are often pleasant to make the homes appear more appealing. We fear them, after all. We're afraid to go, afraid to die. Reformation Sunday is about the fear of death, the anxiety that comes with being human, with being mortal. The late historian Stephen Osment described Luther's time 500 years ago as a period of anxious piety. Sin weighed heavily on people's minds. Sin meant death, being kept from heaven. Anxiety is now being driven by new things. Climate change is a new fear, a new anxiety. In growing numbers, people are fearing the death of the planet. We have other fears, too. We fear that our children will not make it, that their lives will not pan out. We measure our happiness by how well they do in school, then later in the job market. Inside of us is a ticking clock. The climate is changing. We are aging. The virus has only increased our fears and divided us politically. Reformation Sunday is about our fear. Martin Luther, at first, was burdened with anxiety. He feared his father. He feared God. Once in a violent storm, he promised God if his life was spared, he would become a monk. And that's what he did after the storm. The church in Luther's day raised revenue by fear, by manipulating the anxious people. Money will always change hands easily when people are afraid. For their anxiety over hell, sin, and death, the medieval church began selling people forgiveness for a price. Heaven could be purchased. Heaven was for sale. So the church taught. So then the anxious people believed. They turned their money over in the hope of calming their fear. Luther, in his early years, imagined God no differently. His image of God was a 
demanding deity who could never be pleased. Nothing was ever good enough. But he kept trying in the hope that some good deed performed might be enough to get God off his neck. After years of trying to please God by doing good works, Luther remained as anxious as ever. What finally changed his life came from reading the Bible, the same Bible we are going to give today, have already given today to the children of our church. Luther's life was changed by reading the Bible. The second reading today was a key passage for Luther. The metaphor here is legal, judicial. God declares us not guilty. God freely pardons us, forgives all our sins, all of our bad behavior, all of our crimes. Luther preferred the legal metaphor he found in the Bible. In the second reading, a courtroom scene is implied. The evidence against us is overwhelming. We are entirely guilty. Our sin is undeniable. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves, but then comes the unexpected news. The judge declares us not guilty because Jesus Christ has taken our place. He receives the sentence we deserve. Suddenly, our anxiety is lifted. The gospel says today that when Jesus makes us free, we are free indeed. The prophet Jeremiah in the first reading also imagines grace in this way. He announces that God will freely forgive and remember our sin no more by a new covenant, by the new covenant Jeremiah envisioned. From the least to the greatest, we will all be loved. We are justified, saved for heaven by God's grace. Forgiveness is received through faith in God. The experience of God's grace changed Luther's life forever. 500 years later, how might the 95 theses he posted to the castle church door in Wittenberg change our lives? Well, since it is true that God loves us freely, apart from anything we've done, any sin we've committed, since it is true that God loves us freely apart from any achievements, I think parents can begin loving their children freely, freely loving them for who they are. Instead of measuring happiness by how well they do in school, treating them as just another symbol of success. I think climate change debate is a manifestation of the same anxiety afflicting everyone. But instead of attacking each other, we can be graceful toward each other. We can speak peacefully. From God's perspective, there are no distinctions among us. We are all sinners. We are all the same. Forgiveness is the only path forward. God forgives freely all who repent. God welcomes us into a life of grace. We are invited to know, experience, and share the truth that will set us free. We can take a deep breath. Jesus has removed the anxiety about death. He tells us we have a permanent place in the household of God. By his grace alone, we receive heaven, home at last, better than silver acres, far better than anything else we have known. Home is heaven. 
given freely by God's grace. By faith we receive it. We don't have to pay for it. Luther nailed his 95 theses to the castle church door to make it clear to all a mighty fortress is our God. A mighty fortress is our God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. God forgives freely, his love not for sale, doesn't need to be earned, and so Reformation Sunday is always an invitation to begin to gracefully live, to reform life toward grace, toward the joy of knowing Sin is freely forgiven. Following the wisdom of the psalm today, let us be still and know that God is with us, that God loves us all. Luther's Reformation message is always that we need to stop pressuring ourselves, each other, including our children, We need to give our sin and fears to God who will lift them from us. God loves us freely. I'll say it again and again. God loves us freely. Jesus lived, died, ascended to heaven to prepare a place for all, for all who believe. No strings attached, no fine print. There's nothing to fear anymore. All is well. All will be finally well, soon at last, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
profess our faith, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death, nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Let us pray. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, neighborhoods, homesteads. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable planet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office, for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places throughout the country, Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities may be united by justice and peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit, especially the ones on our prayer ministry list. Strengthen hospitals, health clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes, recovery centers. Strengthen them all to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live and find abundant life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide the teaching and learning in our catechism classes, Bible studies, in all of our gatherings. Guide the teaching and learning in our seminaries and universities. Bestow your wisdom upon us all. Help us to see clearly what is true and what is not. So that we can make right judgments through our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for Martin Luther, for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us, who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge what needs to be challenged and to work toward life-giving reformation in the world today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share in the peace, bowing toward those near to us.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, 
and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We've been made by the Holy Spirit into one family. Let us pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. Next Sunday is the Festival of All Saints, and as we have been doing in recent years, there will be one liturgy next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Those of you who are worshiping with us by live streaming can join us next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. for the celebration of All Saints. Thank you again for joining us today. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Hope you're feeling better. Nice to see.